Hi, Core Running Clients. Okay, so this video here is going to go over an overview of the customer list, customer and location lists. Um, so this is just going to give you a broad base of giving you a night, giving you an explanation of what each part is. Then there's going to be more specific videos that goes into about how about adding customers, customers and locations and all the features inside the customer list. Okay, so this right here is your customer list. I'm looking right there. This is my old Homestead Ice database. And to access it, obviously you can go up here and go to just customer list. Now, one huge thing to understand inside Coordinating Software is when I refer to the word customer, I'm referring to um, a more a broad-based customer. Like, let's say if we're talking about CVSs or, or Walgreens or Walmarts or in general, that's a customer. Okay, now locations are the actual customer delivery locations. Okay, so when I refer to customer, I'm talking more like a header, locations is the delivery locations. Now, over here in the customer list, for obviously you got the add new customer, delete selected customers. By the way, I do not recommend deleting customers if you have sales records on them. That does not remove the records. Okay, that just, get, that just uh, removes the, the naming of it. And then the sales records will still be there, but the naming will be gone. Okay, uh, we have a search tool to find customers right here. So if I was if I was to type type in Mark like that, anything with my M A R in their customer list, let's give me more specific Marks. Okay, so we have Marco Polos and Marks. Okay, so now I'm going to go over here and clear the search back to where I was. You got advanced search options here, which I have, I actually do not use very often, and then you've got over here say show me active, inactive, or all. Okay, so for instance, I just want to see like who's inactive. Okay, there's just my inactive locations, but I'm just going to stick to the active ones. Okay, there we go. All right, so obviously you got a page, page thing right here, an option, pages uh, over here. So you got actives, locations. Now this is what I was talking about before. So for instance, uh, let's look at this. Uh, I'm going to look at. Uh, I'm going to type in Mark. Well, let me just go to a larger page. Okay, so right here, rib cook-off, there's five locations. I'm going to click right here and sort. Let me go back to the front first page. Okay, so you can see right here, Giant Eagle Supermarkets. I had 61 Giant Eagle Supermarkets that were in my customer list. Okay, and of course right here telling you when the customer was actually entered. Now if I go and click on one of my customers, now we're getting into the actual list themselves. You can see I have all 61 of the locations under there. Now I use this a lot, not necessarily for billing, but for sorting purposes. This is really good, especially if you are you're, you're, you have co-packed locations for Arctic Glacier or Home City or Ready Ice. Um, you can separate them out as being Arctic Glacier as a customer, and here's all the delivery locations. Okay, And that doesn't most so billing is very flexible in this software. So now that I've opened up Giant Eagle, let's get into the customer properties. You got customer properties, that's like the customer contacts, Get the customer contacts, customer attachments, discussions. So looking here, customer properties. Okay, so we got some things going on here. This is the customer name. Okay, not the delivery location. This is a customer, kind of like Walgreens or Walgreens. You got a category option here. Now these category options are create are set up inside Cool Running, a way of setting up that customer into different categories. So that way there you can do reporting on it, active or inactive. Now you say if you say inactive, it'll inactivate all the locations. Okay, default delivery options. Do you want to require proof of delivery? This is pictures, okay? Pictures that might uh, that the drivers might might need uh, out there on the delivery. It's now, you know, picture of a scan report or something like that. Um, driver notes. This is a default driver note that you can put this note in, and as you create locations, which we'll do, um, it'll start. It'll add that note in automatically. It kind of saves some time. Default pricing. Now this gets into tier pricing. Now I created videos about tier pricing and how that works. This is how you set the tier for all the delivery locations. Ding, right here. This is here as a default for, do you want to do sell prices on these delivery locations? Do you want to bring retail prices? Again, covered in another video about pricing. Okay, so you can set those options and when you create your locations, those options will default in when you create them. Default billing. So this is the billing address that's used for all these giant eagles. This is obviously not the billing address for giant eagles, but this is just in here. So you can tell the delivery location to use this as a billing address or use their delivery location address. So this is like a custom like Walgreens corporate. Okay. So you put that information in. Obviously taxable, non-taxable, put in a tax or vendor number. The sales tax area that's most common. Okay. Billing notes. Default order notes, which we'll 
go over and deliver locations, and then a default option for billing. So right down here, we can specify, hey, this customer's terms only. They're always terms no matter what. The term on the, down here, default pay methods terms, and I always want them to be terms 30 days. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and update that. Now, we have these other tabs right here. Now, we've got locations right here, customer contacts. You can add customer contacts, okay, and you can set that for auto email and everything. So it's very simple. You just go ahead and add the information in. Customer attachments. You can upload documents and upload at the customer level rather than delivery location level information about the customer. And then it gets customer discussion board where between your company, you guys can add a topic or something like that to discuss about this customer and keep records of any type of correspondence that's about this customer. Okay, so now we're going to click on locations. These are delivery locations. So this is the this is the nuts and bolts of what goes into delivery app and what and what we're doing for the actual deliveries themselves. I can see right here we have options to see if uh, do they have a sensor, auto scheduled, taxable, non taxable or not. Okay, so I'm actually going to uh, break off of this. No, actually, I'm going to stay with this. I'm sorry. Giant Eagle. So clicking on the Giant Eagle right there. Now we're getting into the information about the delivery. Okay, so this is delivery location. This is where it's going. Okay, that's the place where it's going. Are they route enabled or not? Now, route enabled or not has to do with the um, has to do with the route builder. Okay, now if this customer is routed on a regular basis, okay, you send the truck in without them calling, say yes. If they are not routed, you make them call for all the deliveries, say no. Now, what does this do? Well, it kind of helps out with your route builder, which I'm just going to go ahead and open that up here. And I'm going to go to the route builder. Now, down here in our route builder, which there will be more videos discussing the route builder, you have access to all your customers, but only the ones that are route enabled. So what I like to recommend people to do is if you will just want to quick add customers to your customer list just by, just by clicking and dragging, um, you can, if you're route enabled, you can just put them on. That just created an order and they're on a route. That's just that real quick way of putting somebody in there um, last second. Okay, so that's what that does. Private labeling. Do you, does this customer have a very specific receipt for that delivery location? Well, you can set this right here. You can set this up in your admin objects area, which I should, I'm just going to kind of show you. Admin objects and private labels. You can set up private labeling and set that specifically to that location. Now, the EDI trading, okay, that would be something separate for EDI, EDI support. Are they an active location? Yes or not. Now, you saw at the delivery location, we could set, a, set it inactive there at the customer level, which would inactivate all these delivery locations, or you can do it individually to this one. Extended properties. Now, this has everything to do with QuickBooks and uploading into QuickBooks or whatever accounting software that you have. This is something I personally get involved in to make sure that it's set up right. So you don't need to get the specifics in this, but this right here is exactly where it's going to import to in QuickBooks. Delivery information, pretty standard right here. What's the delivery address? Okay, what delivery zone are they in? Okay, now delivery zones are predetermined and you assign each delivery location to their delivery zone. So if you're looking back in our route builder right here, you can see that these customers are all separated in their specific respective delivery areas or zones. Okay, um, zone routing order. I'll make a separate video about zone routing order, um, about how to how that how that process actually works. So you can actually take an entire zone and say which one would be first, which one would be last if you had to route an entire zone. And it's a way of uh, using Route Builder, hitting that button and just automatically put them in order. Okay, which I'll discuss in another video. What days are they closed? Okay, these are days that they're open. Now, if they are closed on any particular day, you check it. Now, what that does inside the route builder is it makes it so the delivery location will show that it's not open, which is right there, invalid delivery date. So that's what that would do. Geocoding. It automatically looks up the geocode at the address. Um, if you happen to add a new customer today and save it, it'll automatically geocode it. But you can also manually put one in or just disable it altogether. Now, here is a driver note. The driver note is a static note that you put in the driver will see every single time. Default order note, which I'll discuss in another video, is a note that pops up every time you place an order for the customer. That default order note will come up. Again, I'll make a video on that. Billing. Uh, pricing. Now, pricing, this right here is where it's, it's telling it, well, we are inheriting the tier price that the customer's at, okay, which I discussed a lot in tier pricing on another video. Okay, so it's inheriting it from here, but I can override this level to go to a totally different tier. 
Okay, print the receipts. Do you want to print the sell price and the receipts? Print the retail price and the receipts, so on and so forth. So you can tell this, hey, I don't want to print the, print the price on the tickets, and it will leave the price off the tickets, okay? Surcharges, any surcharges that are created. Again, I created a video about surcharging. Um, you can go in here and specify well, what surcharge do I want this guy to have, or surcharges, okay? I'll save that because I decided to just put that on there. All right, uh, billing. Now, this is the export group. This is the export group of batch where we're batching up sales and sending it to accounting. Now, you could have a company out there and have a couple different accounting files, and you want these group of customers to go in this accounting file, these group to go in another. That's what this does. You can specify different export groups. Payment method. I kind of discussed that at the customer level, but right here at the delivery location level, let's just say this customer here is cash only, okay? Then I'm gonna say they're cash. Their default method has to be cash, and there's no terms. That right there is cash only. What about a check? Well, I'll accept cash and check from them. What if they might often, they might want to have terms sometimes. They might have to sign for it. Terms, okay? I know I'm getting, this video is getting kind of long, but I'm really getting the specifics and explaining all these things, and there'll be, there'll be more videos going over actually adding the customer. Now right here, billing. Who do I want to bill it to? Do I want to bill it to the customer address? where I discussed in the customer area, or do I want to bill specifically to this delivery location, or do I have a totally different address I want to bill it to? You got three options there. Are they taxable, yes or no, okay? Is the location taxed on anything they buy at all? You would say yes. If they're taxed on, not on taxed, if, uh, excuse me. If they're taxed on nothing at all, you say no. If they're taxed on any item at all, you say yes. Sales tax jurisdiction, which one do they belong to? Vendor number, again, it was up at the customer level, but we put it, put it override it here. Do you want a proof of delivery on image? Billing notes, okay, is there any specific billing notes? Okay, going now moving out over sales history. Okay, I'm gonna close that out there and cancel. Okay, now going over here to sales history. Now sales history will give us the sales history of what they've been buying, what they've bought in the past. Just a real quick page, you can click on any one of these and see the specifics on that. Order history. Okay, there's no orders for history for this particular customer, but if there's any orders in, in play, then you will see them. Um, PO numbers. Do you want to add a blanket PO that'll come up every single time on the invoice? You put it in right here, and you can put those values in and be done. Received on account. I'll make a separate video about received on account. Now, received on account is when the driver's on the road and the customer collects money. Um, for sale, okay? And if they happen to have an R, uh, happen to received on account or ROA, um, it'll show up here that the driver collected extra money towards the sale. Now, from the accounting side, your accountant, accounting office will have to apply that open, apply that extra money to whatever respective invoices that it's paying. Okay, so I'll go back to ROA, sorry. Contacts, pretty self-explanatory there. You can go ahead and just add contacts in. Now, the primary contact, which it says right here, is the one that's going to show up in the handheld. So if I click on this right here, of course, I can put in that specific information. Specify if you want auto emails to the receipts. Auto email only works if the, if the feature is turned on. Task. Task, I've explained in other videos. This is a, this is a tool for being able to like stick a post-it note on a customer. Something needs to be done the next time they're on a delivery. So I could go over here and add a task and say uh, full rotate ice chest. And I can put that in for the 31st and save it. Now that will pop up on the handhelds. Whoever goes in there and tries to make a delivery. I'll, just, I'll be making another video specific on tasks. Merchandisers. Um, if there's any merchandise assigned, I'm going to make. I think I'm going to from here. I'm going to break off and go to a different customer that, that has a merchandiser, so we can kind of get an idea how that that how that works. Let's see if Under Palm Group does. I think Under Palm Group has a merchant. Here we go. It's a good example. And I, because I do a lot of testing with this one. Now, this one right here is basically telling us, hey, here's a merchandise on site. It was, it was delivered on this date. Is there a return date, rental, comments, anything like that? If I click on the merchandiser, merchandiser right here, it takes me right to the merchandiser page. Okay. And this right here will take me right into this information. Is it indoor, outdoors? Do you want to set a pickup date, comments, whatever? Okay. Products. Here's the products that are assigned to this particular delivery location. And I can easily click and assign more or unassign for that matter. So now that's unassigned, okay? So you assign specifically what customers, what products that they buy. Now right here, 
I am saying that, hey, this customer, tier price is 475, but I want them to be four bucks, which I discussed in tier pricing video. Private label surcharge is something totally special and different. This right here has to do with, if you are co-banking for a company and you want a specific price to go into your accounting file that they owe you this much money per bag, Okay, but on the delivery, you want it to be a different price on the delivery. Okay, I will make another video specific to private label surcharge, but you companies out there that are actually co-packing for another company and you want the invoice to go into your system that it's Arctic Glacier or Home City owes you money specific to amount, I can set that up for you. Okay, auto schedules. This customer doesn't currently have any auto schedules in place. Attachments, you can upload documents. Again, just like you could the customer level, you can upload documents at the delivery level. Now, that being said, I'm going to go one more time and then I want to show this auto schedule so you can see what it means. I'll just go right into my route builder. And I'll get, get right into one of these type of customers. So I'm gonna just going to go right into BP 55th. And we'll discuss the route builder later. So clicking on that one right there, I can go right into orders. There's your order history. I can go to their auto schedules. This is the auto schedule that they're on. You can see right here, they're running on every Monday and it started on 216 of 2024. Here is the activity of the forecast schedule. You can see orders canceled, routed, whatever. I can click on this right here. It takes me right into the schedule manager, which there'll be another video here discussing schedule manager. Okay, so that was a long video and a lot big overview of all the different things that are inside the the, um, the customer list stuff. Um, uh, more, there'll be more videos that are going to get more specifics about the custom, uh, specifics about make, adding a customer and a delivery location. Okay, so hopefully that was not hor hopefully that maybe was not too horribly boring, but um, I like to be very specific on explaining what that's what uh, the overview of the whole customer list. Okay, thanks everybody. If you have any questions, contact Corning Software. Thank you.